Welcome to our Threat Hunt with Jupyter Notebook series guys. This is the part one of Jupyter Notebook session. But before we begin, first I would encourage you to go to the part eight or day eight of Threat Hunt episode where we have outlined whatever we are going to discuss in this full episode. So I thought to create this different playlist where we will only focus what is the need of Jupyter Playbook or Jupyter Notebook in our Threat Hunt. So we are without a further delay, let's dig into our session. So we are first verifying Python 3, whether it is present into our machine or not. And as you can see, we have Python 3. Next, we are going to install pip3 because we need the pip3 for this particular installation. Okay. Okay. Once that is done. So what we are going to do, we are going to install pip3 using Jupyter. So Jupyter Notebook, basically we are going to install and we are going to use pip3. It will take some time depending upon the bandwidth that you have into your machine. Okay, so it is done. So now we need some environment variable that is very much required to run your Jupyter Notebook from your command terminal and it should open in your browser window. So you can hold this session and you can just note down this particular command so we are basically exporting local bin to our path directory once that is done we are going to simply write jupyter notebook that will open up our terminal and that will open it in browser so now if you see from where we have opened the notebook it will give you all of the directories that is present inside your local directory from where you are using or you have opened this jupyter server it is running on but by default port 8888 and we are going to create a new file from here okay the new file should be a python one because that's the need of the r and we are going to need a python 3 so this is the area where we actually dump everything we write our code and we execute our code okay so this is our first print statement and this is the indentation guys where we write our code you can run it from this button itself or you can simply paste shift enter you can type shift enter that will run your code and this particular code will be executed and the output will be given in this bottom area okay so let us see quickly where exactly we are going to see our output over here now you see this output has been printed over here so that means our jupyter notebook has been installed successfully now we will move on to installation for our next steps we will log out from this session we will kill the session and we will go for the next installation phase okay so first we will verify whether we have java installed or not if not we are going to install the default jre that we need very much for our PySpark to run properly into our system yes once that is done we are going to verify the version it works properly we need to install scala as well so sudo apt get install scala that is another dependency to run PySpark into your machine once that is done, we are going to verify the job, the Scala version and it is perfect for our installation and we need Pi 4J as well. Done. So now we are going to go to our Spark official library for the Apache. You can go to this download section and you can download the release version. So for our tutorial, we are going to use the 3.0.3 .3 version, which we believe the most stable version at the point of time we are recording this particular video. So once this particular tar file has been downloaded to your machine, you can just open and unzip this particular tar. And now you see it is open now if you do a ls you see the spark tzz file and we are going to simply extract that file and it will be everything just for verification we are going to inside that folder and you see there are all of the folders that we need bin conf python r kubernetes jars every file has been listed that we need for our tutorial Okay, so once that is done, so now see it is very important. So from our main working directory, that is our home dot black pearl. So what we need to do, we need to export lot of environment variables. Okay, so let put your attention very much because these are the particular things that you need very much to run Jupyter using Spark properly without these 
variables or without this proper extraction method you will not be able to run them properly so pay attention and if required note down these commands you are going to need them okay so we are done at this point of time so these are the environment variables that you guys need if required you can pause this particular video and you can write it down as per your own convenient so now we have done installing everything now let us power up jupyter notebook and let us see whether we are able to um, create anything using spark directory or not so again we are going to create a new python file and we are going to import spark pi spark from our uh, spark installation that we have just run okay so now just pay attention guys so what we have done we have just imported the pi spark okay and as you see if you are not seeing any error that means that that property or that load has been successful okay if you have seen there is some issue there is some error that would have been extracted just below the execution has done okay so let us move on let us create a session or from pyspark.sql because we are going to need the sql and we are going to use every threat hunt library threat hunt data set that we are going to hunt on we are going to convert them into a temporary sql table awesome so now if you see and if you notice it this particular section there is a star okay so this star means this particular command is getting executed and it is getting compiled okay so if you do not see a star or something or if it returns three that means one two three it has ran successfully okay and what exactly we are doing we have imported our pyspark library from pyspark.sql we are importing spark session which is basically nothing but an sql session we are going to create and we are going to do a environment variable that is a spark from spark session build app name so this is just a testing app name so we just want to see whether we are able to create a spark session and we are able to print it or not right so spark session means we are going to create a sql table that's it okay so let's move on and let's just see and print this particular sucker out so that you will know that whether it has successfully ran or not okay now if you see after printing this sucker so you see this has been given our property value okay and it has given the object id as well so that means our code has ran successfully we have successfully installed our PySpark, we have successfully installed everything, Jupyter Notebook and every other notion. And at this point of time, we are ready for our next tutorial. And just remember guys, so whenever you need or you are running PySpark or you are running this uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook, for testing purpose, you can always come back to this notebook and you can run these commands just to verify whether they are working properly or not. Any of the module, if any produces any error, you need to troubleshoot. Otherwise, we are good to go, guys. Okay, so that's it from the first or part one episode. I will see you on part two.